All right, Eddie, me, Ball Spaghetti. If you're ready, then I'm ready. Let's fucking do this. Rear naked takes. Back up in this bitch. You already know what's going on. UFC Vegas 48 just happened. Ed, what are your immediate thoughts of it? You gotta do your eyebrow. <laughs> there you go. You gotta you gotta put on a Bluetooth uh, a little piece on, dude. <laughs> there you go. That on Dale Brown. Yeah, the they... Detroit Urban Survival Training dust. Detroit Urban Survival Training. <laughs> that was funny. What you do if you need to get out of a life and death situation. That fucker's funny. Friend. Honestly, that was the highlight of this fucking car, dude, was just seeing him there. It's funny because I don't even think he they they put him on the mic or anything. He, he was just literally there. His presence was just, no, <laughs> just dude. caught him up. Yeah, he wasn't even he didn't even do shit. I just I thought that shit was hilarious. Um shit. Joaquin Buckley said uh on the show, remember? On Ariel? He's like, Yeah, I just brought him up for promotion, but he's a cool guy. <laughs> yeah, it fucking worked, dude. I mean shit, you gotta do what you gotta do. Like now, I mean, I always knew who jo- who Joaquin Buckley was. Um, fuck, I, I I might be wrong, but was he the one that got he got that spinning back kick, right? Yeah, place? yeah, that, the, yeah. So that obviously, spinning back kick. Yeah. So like to the real fans, like Ed and I, that's how we know him. That's how I know him at least. But I feel like now he's really established, and I feel like whenever people look into him, they're gonna be like, "Oh shit, he brought out Dale from uh, Detroit Herbal Survival uh, Training." But then they look deeper into him, like, oh fuck, he's also the guy that got that spinning back kick. So it speaks that was a lot of volume. A good fight too. Yeah, it, it it really was. It was it was a little technical. I lost my over under on that one. Um, he was on Ariel Hawani's yesterday, so it was pretty neat to see him. Joaquin. New Manta. Uh, hey, he's a pretty decent following now. Hundred and forty seven thousand. I think what really did it was 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 having Dale and then that spinning back kick um early on or earlier. That's just dope though. Um, fuck. And so how how are we doing? What, what what you been up to, buddy? Let, let the people know. Just living life, enjoying these fights. We've been spoiled. Um, we've had a lot of pretty good cards back to back to back. <clears throat> so, yeah, we have. Um, I've been I've been pretty satisfied with each and every fight night that we had. Um, next week we got another good headliner, uh, Bobby Green and Isla Makachev. Yeah, shout out to so, Bobby Green. Lean yeah, Bobby mean Bobby Green's Green. Indeed. Yes, sir. It's weird. It says they're both ranked number four. That's weird. Um, yeah, that might be a glitch or something. But, but yeah, I mean, pretty spoiled with the content. Uh, overall fighting too. I mean, um. Uh, the Bellator, shout out to oh, uh, the right. shout out to the Central Valley boy Isaiah Hokit. He took a dub via rear naked choke. Yep, shout out so, to that guy. Shout out to him representing the Valley. He did shout out the six six one and the five five nine. That was pretty dope. Nice. Uh, so shout out Isaiah Hokit <clears throat> for his Bellator and professional uh, <laughs> career win. So way to go, yeah, my that, boy. It was, it was. We had a lot of pretty good stuff. Uh, if you're a combat sport fan, we had a lot of stuff. We had. The fucking um Knuckle Mania. Uh, the yes, we had Knuckle Mania um for BKFC. We had Bellator, we had UFC, we also had Amir Khan boxing as well. That was a great fight. I don't know if you saw it. I, it was a little earlier. Yeah, I saw highlights. He got pieced up, huh? Yeah, it actually it was actually a pretty good fucking fight. I'm not gonna lie. Like they were both both going back and forth, but ultimately uh Amir Khan uh, lost. Oh, and the Bellator Neiman Gracie. That yeah. was a pretty good main event too. Yeah, that was a great fight. It's funny, dude, because like apparently the other guy, I think he's like good on the ground as well. But, but neither yeah, of them took it to yeah, the ground. Neither of them went to the fucking ground, which I think Nobody is hilarious. Even bothered. Yeah, which I think is fucking hilarious. But yeah, overall, Ed, we had a pretty good weekend um, of fights. Uh, NBA, the All Star game was on Sunday. I don't Sunday. know if you saw that. That shit was fucking nothing but buckets. Whack. <laughs> Steph Curry, Steph Curry was going in. I am a Laker fan, but goddamn, Steph Curry, like he's he's just one of a kind. Um, all right, Ed, what about any MMA news? What do you got as far as everything that happened? As far as anything that you've heard, what is there anything that, that um that comes to mind? Mean Green, Bobby Green, baby. Yeah, dude, that's all I'm here to talk about. <sighs> yeah, he was uh, Bobby Green. He was on Ariel Hawani's 
he gave a lot of insight and was basically calling all the rest of the fighters a bunch of bitches because uh he's he's sure that he wasn't the first fighter that they came to but I when they him. came to him he took it yeah i believe him too i i believe him too i i honestly i put i put more respect on bobby green's name because he also like pointed that you out said that dan he, hooker had said that too to get a to get a fucking I don't know I, yeah he did say Dan Hooker but I, I he's probably talking out of his ass because Dan Hooker had just already fought him I don't see a reason why they'd want to call him through no through he said that Dan Hooker had said that that Dan Hooker wasn't the first to get called for the Islam fight oh but the fact that you know he did he 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 was damn sure that other people turned it down you know this is the second time this has happened huh because for the that Dan Hooker fight he took that shit on late notice as well. Yeah, I don't know who he was supposed to fight then. Dude, that's fucking crazy. I I don't want to speculate, but fuck, dude. I, I wonder what it is about Islam that nobody either really wants to fight they him or said they that just that in 2020, injured. he had like five or seven fights fall out either because of him or because of somebody else. I think one time a fight fell out because of him. I want to say I think he was like injured or some shit, but... And dude, I don't know. They uh, The, the Narmaga Medoffs have that effect. I mean, fuck, remember back... Uh, when uh, um, Habib was gonna fight for the for the title, it was Tony Ferguson, and that fell out, and then it was Max yep. Holloway, and that, that fell, fell out like three times. Yeah, that's fucking. I don't know something about those Nurmaga Medovs, man. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Bobby Green was on Air Hawaii. He was basically talking shit. Oh, it was it was gonna be Dos Anjos. Oh, that's right. It was gonna be RDA. Um, but yeah, Bobby Green was on Air Hawaii, basically saying shit. Uh, and he actually said that he was going to bring the fight to Islam Makachev. I, I believe him. You know what I mean? Like, I, like, and, and he's true. Cause, I mean, he's actually uh, right because he's, he also said that nobody has brought the fight to Islam. Uh, like, nobody that he's fought, which, again, I believe is, is true as well. I think he fought, uh, when he fought Dan Hooker, he beat him pretty quickly. And then he, he, he fought him. Oh, I forgot the dude's name. But he fought some other guy before that, and then he he beat him pretty badly as well. Um, but fuck yeah, hey, Thiago I, 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 <clears throat> yeah, Thiago Mo- And then there was another one too, but I, I forgot that guy's name too. Hold on. Now now I got myself uh wanting to know who that guy was. It was Drew Dober. That's right. So <clears throat> for the Jan Blahovic and Adesanya fight, he fought Drew Dober and um. Yeah, he beat Drew Dober pretty bad as well. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I actually believe Bobby Green. I really do think that he's going to bring it to him. Now, how, like, how bad is he going to bring it to him? I don't know. But I knowing Bobby Green, I don't think he's going to quit. So I, it'll be very interesting. I, I think for once we'll actually see um, um, some of his ground game. Uh, yeah, some of his ground game. And then we're going to see Islam Makachev also get uh, test it a little bit. I mean, obviously, so this uh, I still think Islam's gonna win. I can see Islam trying to take it to the ground immediately. I don't think he's gonna make it any surprise. Yeah. Um, especially with Habib in his corner. I know Habib's already gonna tell him like clinch him, trip him, single leg, double leg, something. Because uh, I know Habib doesn't want Islam out there trying to stand up with the guy. Because I mean, Habib's done it before. <laughs> he. There's there's uh, video snippets of him, you know, telling Islam, get on the ground, get on the ground, uh, don't stay up, don't stay up with him. Yeah, yeah, and I I foresee that as well. Um, you know, we we just we're just gonna have to wait and see, I guess, how this fight's gonna unfold. I think it's gonna be interesting. Uh, but I mean, ultimately, I still got Islam winning. But this is not the preview show for UFC Vegas four forty two thousand. This is uh the. The post this show. is the post show for UFC Vegas 48. Let's kick it off with some bonuses, shall we? Um, before off. we forget. Um, so, pretty good fights in this main card. Uh, first notable victory was uh, David Onama against Gabriel Benitez. Uh, they were kind of going at it, um, but Onama just ended uh, Benitez with a flurry, um, pretty much. And it was pretty pretty insane to watch. Uh, he just started catching him and then just finished him off with, like, a straight, like, 12-piece combo. So it was, it was pretty nice to see. And then right after, he he called out Dana. He said, 50 Gs, Dana, 50 Gs. And he got his 50 Gs. So uh, David Onama gets the performance of the night. 
Uh, also, Stephanie Ed Edgar, Edgar, she got a performance of the night. Um, can't forget Kyle Dawkins. We'll get into that one later. But Kyle Dawkins, that buzzer beater, uh, Darce Choke, um, now dubbed the Darce Knight. So shout out Kyle Dawkins. And then obviously, uh, Jamal Hill with that knockout on Johnny Walker round one. So those are our bonuses for UFC Vegas 48. Uh, what we got, Gonzo, first fight, what'd you think? Um, <clears throat> shit. Let me look at this. I haven't even brought it up yet. I was actually uh, I actually wanted to bring something up, Ed. Uh, there's been a little bit of news of uh, one of your uh, favorite fighters. I don't know if I don't know if we should talk about it. Johnny Bones Jones. Yeah, and I actually think we can um show this to the fans because it's a uh, public information. So let me let me clip. Yeah, let me pull this up, guys. So explain it to them, Ed. While I get this shit going. So, back in what? In July? Or August? Or was it December? It was uh, September. September. It was fight week. I think when they had, yeah, fight week. Um, I think they had the Hall of Fame ceremony and everything. John Jones was reportedly arrested for, um, I guess, allegedly domestic abuse. Um, he was visibly intoxicated, as you can see in this video. Uh, I'm not sure if you can pull any audio out of that. I'm going to try. But, um, yeah, I mean, you could tell he was very, very, very drunk. Um, obviously, there's been uh, talks about John Jones in the past with uh, not only drug use, but alcohol use and addiction. <clears throat> so, I mean, it's hard to watch this. I'm glad he's already passed this. Um, but, damn, it kind of sucks. I kind of feel for him, you know, just – being in that position, obviously he he brought it upon himself. But man, he looks defense defenseless. He doesn't look like that superstar that we all know. Um, so hopefully he's past this. Hopefully he has some better habits. Uh, I know Jackson Wink after this, they dropped him, um, at least temporarily, and then he started bashing them, saying that they weren't really there for him. But anyways, we're besides that. He's now you know moving up to heavyweight. Uh, to see what he could do. But as far as this video, man, it was. Pretty uh, weird. Very weird. Still working on getting this audio going, my bad, guys. But, yeah. Say it. Yeah, I can hear that on my end. I hope sure. you can hear that. Officer Nerd. Calm yeah. down, bro. Hear me in my whole damn night. Shit, bro. Because there's no audio. Uh, what did I do? All these okay. officers. What did I do? Officer Garrett Nerd. You got it? Me. I think so. I think they could hear it. I can't hear it from my end, though. I'm going to have to do a little bit of more. Yeah, yeah. It's on. I can hear it. I hope it's not too loud. Like, not me, but I put it on, on Twitch. You can hear it. Yeah, dude. I mean, I honestly don't know what to make of this video. I, I just... I honestly feel bad for the guy. I mean, I, I've been drunk a few times in my life. Some A few times, like, belligerently Have you ever been hammered? You know exactly how he's feeling. Yeah, he's just fucking talking what off the dome, and what's what's even more sad is that he probably doesn't even remember this. Yeah, this is probably the, this is probably the first time him watching it. Getting elected to the Hall of Fame, and now this is what I got. Well, that's a crazy, uh, that's a crazy thing, guys. Um, obviously yeah. limit it. I mean, I get hammered. Don't get me wrong, but uh, you know, I guess when he's a public figure like this, and uh, you know, one of the best in the sport ever of all time. You know, some, some regard him as the best. Um, it kind of sucks to see. Yeah. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, guys, just, I, I feel like this isn't, uh, I mean, I want to say it's probably a personal ordeal, personal problem, but also too, it's, a, it's an alcohol problem. Because I feel like the way, whenever I see John Jones like compose himself uh, with the media, I feel like he does a really great job at it. And I feel like he, he's very uh, well-spoken. But it's like, whenever you see this kind of shit, you kind of start asking those questions, you know what I mean? Like, fuck, what is, what is it like behind the behind the cameras? What is he like, you know, under the influence, you know what I mean? Fuck, was alcohol the only substance in his system? We're human. Yeah. We're human. People are human. Yeah. And we can see it. And you know, you know the great old saying of, like, um, fucking, uh, what is it? Sober... Or drunk mind speak sober thoughts or some shit like that. I don't know the saying. But anyways, I mean, 
Yeah, guys, I, I don't know. Just just remember, you know, it doesn't matter if you're the richest man in the world, the most high status, the president, whatever. Like, at the end of the day, you were born a human and you're going to die a human. So these are all real world, real emotions. At, you know, the most raw we could get it. So. Yeah, guys, I mean, I, all I can say is I hope, you know, he learns from it like the rest of them but you know we never know john jones but yeah that's that's enough of that um yeah so let, let's just get right into the the main card then uh me... joaquin buckley and abdul razak al hassan okay numansa buckley i mean when watching this these guys are fucking specimens bro Oh, yeah. They're huge. They look like 205ers, but they're actually 185. And to me, it was just mind-blowing. Uh, they were they definitely weren't 185 fight night. I can promise you that. Um, Buckley was at least 200 pounds on fight night. Easy. But, you know, they weighed in at 185, so that's pretty insane. And they look pretty damn good. Um, You know, the, obviously, the, the biggest part of this or one of the biggest factors, or not factors, but one of the biggest stories was Dale, uh, Dale Brown from Dust, Detroit Urban Survival Training, the guy who teaches people how to get out of life-threatening situations. Um, you know, well regarded, I guess, for his uh, defense, right? And man, um, when you watch this fight, Joaquin Buckley was on a different level in terms of his defense. He was blocking kicks very nicely and fluidly. He was defending the takedown. Um, when he did get taken down, he was defending transitions very nice. Uh, he was trying to like rain on some grounded pound strikes. Buckley defended him beautifully, perfectly. He looked like he wasn't even phased on the ground or on his back. Um, he get, I think he gave up his back at one point. He was still, you know, defending it pretty well. So it was just crazy how it went hand in hand with Dell Brown, you know, uh, who knows? Maybe he taught him a couple moves, but his defense definitely was up. Uh, and then Dell, obviously, you saw that shot where they were turning on his corner. He was just locked in. So, um, <laughs> man, it, it's cool because Buckley, Buckley even said that Dell was like, you know what? This guy's trying to take your life. You got to defend yourself. You got to be the bigger guy. And, I mean, it worked, man. Buckley looked pretty damn good. Obviously, both these guys gave it their all. The third round, um, Abdul, I think he came out a little stronger. It was a split decision. However, I think Buckley really had it the entire fight. You know, only that last round did he slow down. But damn, I mean, there was a shot. It was pretty much a meme. There was a shot where both of these guys were on their backs, on the ground, kind of like shaking their hands. They were there for like a minute, dude. A fat minute. It was yep. crazy. They yep. gave it their all. Yep. Yeah, I, 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 well, I think the very same thing that you were thinking. Um, yeah, these guys went out there, did what they had to do. I was quite surprised because I, I honestly, I took the under on this fight. So I think the, the over under, I think was at a seven and a half minutes. So yeah. I was, I was really hoping to see that knockout, but Joaquin Buckley was fighting a lot more like tactically, you know, Detroit urban survival tactics. Hey, that should, that should just be, that should just be a new style of fighting adopted, adopted by Joaquin Buckley, the Detroit Dale Brown, urban, the, the goat. Fucking Detroit Herbal Survival Fighting or some shit. I don't know. But uh, in all seriousness, those guys, um, yeah, Joaquin definitely put on a pretty good for performance, despite me thinking that he was going to get the knockout. But, you know, it kind of makes sense when you're fighting somebody like uh, this Abdul guy. Uh, he looks like a straight monster. But uh, Joaquin, you know, definitely went out there, did what he had to do. I don't necessarily agree with the split decision. I I, I want to say I, I had it uh, two to three, if not three to three to zero. But um two to three i mean uh fucking uh two to one and then maybe a three to zero but yeah i don't know i would have to go back and really watch that fight but it was definitely a great performance by joaquin buckley so congrats to him congrats to dale dale was on his way to becoming the um the the coach of the year so as long as joaquin keeps winning if joaquin wins another three to four fights this year dude i, I wouldn't see why you wouldn't want to give dale the the um, coach of the year award so coach of the year award yeah he's a yard a has a uh, coach coaching performance of the year so far so yep 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 all right guys now moving on to the next fight we got uh jim miller versus nicholas 
Mo Mota Mota whatever I don't know how to pronounce the name. Um, yeah, I had the over on this fight, and I believe the over was like eleven and a half minutes. When boy was I fucking wrong. Um, I should have trusted yeah. my gut a little bit more, only because uh, I mean, I I saw where the where Nicholas was coming from, and I saw where Jim Miller was at. Jim Miller definitely had displayed veteran experience. He definitely showed you know, like the the heart of what an of what a UFC fighter um has and you know Nicholas he's still pretty fresh I think this is his, his debut in the UFC so Nicholas has a lot to learn I I don't remember how old he is um probably pretty young if you ask me um uh well he's twenty nine so he he's he's not too young but Jim Miller's definitely a vet in the game so. Hats off to him. He definitely showed everybody what it means to be a UFC fighter, despite um, of how much experience you do have. And if you already have one foot out the door, you know, you're in the UFC for a reason. You're not just some bozo that they pick off of a fucking corner. So, again, congrats to Jim Miller, Nicholas. Um, he has some work to do, but, you know, you see, you know the story with Charles Oliveira and people like, like them, you know. <clears throat> so, anything's possible. What do you think about it, Ed? Yeah, I mean, Jim Miller in that first round. Yeah, in the first round, they both looked pretty solid. Mota was actually landing some pretty good leg kicks and strikes. But you could tell Miller was holding his own. And, man, he surprised me, too. I mean, you know, I, I knew he still had it in him. He had some finishes. I think his last one was a was a knockout as well in October. So, I mean, this guy was no – I knew he was going to be a pushover. I had him winning the fight, although by decision. And then, man, he just comes out. And then catches Mota, caught him pretty nasty, actually, dropped him to the ground, and then just ended up, you know, just pounding him down there with, with freaking authority, too. I mean, this guy was just letting loose, and it looked like a nice, well-seasoned Miller, but, I mean, keep in mind, Jim Miller's 39, and he looks like he was fighting, like, in his early 30s, you know, maybe even late 20s. Like, he still looks like a, you know, a pretty good fighter. And yeah, he looks fresh. Not, yeah, he's not going to be no pushover um gatekeeper like like guida you know i think guida had a win in his last fight but you could tell guida like he, he's lost a few steps you know and it, it respectfully so i mean he's been in some damn bangers but he, jim miller is not no clay guida jim miller is a damn fighter like this guy looks conditioned um he still looks pretty sharp especially at the you know prime age of 39 so shout out to him man i mean he, he fought a damn great fight surprised me with the knockout but you know, at the end of the day, he got the dub. So, yep. shout uh, out to that boy. Nice that bet. See who he fights next. Yep. <clears throat> so, moving on to the next fight. I think this is the only fight that Ed and I had uh, different, which is uh, Parker Porter and Alan Fado. Uh, I'm going to be honest, Ed. I believe during this time, I was possibly grilling. I don't, re uh, I don't remember what I was doing, I'm going to be honest. But my full attention wasn't on this fight. I, ca I caught the last round. Yeah, I, I wasn't paying attention too much on this fight. Uh, my girlfriend and I were going to go get some uh, fucking you bake pizzas or whatever you want to call them. So I like the subway of pizzas and we came home and we made bake them. And bake. Yes, sir. And uh, I was munching out on some pizza. But whenever I got done eating, I come back and I, I see that it went to decision. And uh, Parker Porter uh, pulled it off. The last couple of minutes of the last round, it definitely looked very dominant on Parker Porter's side. So... Uh, if you ask me how I how they had it judged, I couldn't tell you, but I just remember Parker Porter's, you know, doing what he had to, what he had to do. He looked fresh. He looked he looked like the dominant opponent. So, congrats to him. He ultimately got me the the victory for um this week. So, yeah, shout out to Parker Parker Porter. What do you got? Ed? Yeah, I mean, Bedo. I saw him in the third round. He caught him a few times, but after that. Uh, Porter was just kind of taking advantage of everything, being very technical. He looked a lot sharper than Bado. Bado looked a little sloppy, and then when it came to the ground game, uh, Porter just kind of manhandled him. So, I mean, took a dub. You did. That's all pretty much we had to say about that. Yeah. Um. All right. Now to the co-main event. I actually watched this one. This was actually um pretty good fight in my opinion. We got Di Kyle Dawkins, the brother of Chris Dawkins, versus Jamie Pickett. Um, 
shit, dude. Uh, th- this fight was all Kyle Dawkins. Like, the, the whole fight from beginning to, e- to end. Um, fucking landed 19 of the 29 strikes that he threw. And fucking um, Jamie Pickett only threw nine strikes. And he landed five. Uh, Kyle Dawkins took it to the ground. He, he got three successful takedowns out of six. Um, and from there, it was as soon as the ground, it went to the ground, it was all Kyle Dawkins. He had him in that weird, um, uh, Darsh choke. Yeah, and that weird Darsh choke. It didn't even look like if it was locked in or not. But as soon as I saw Jamie Pickett's hand creep out, I was like, nope, it's done. And especially the way he had him, like, he, I don't know. I, I just knew it was all Kyle Dawkins whenever he got him in that Darsh choke. And then his hand came out and he tapped right before the fucking bell which was insane. You don't see finishes like that that often. Yeah. That kind of reminded me of the Cody Garbrandt um, fight where he knocked out, uh, I forgot who it was, but it was... Asensio? Yeah, when he knocked him out in the last uh, fucking five seconds of the fight. So yeah. this is pretty similar, but it, in this case, it was with the submission. So yeah, uh, shout out to Kyle Dawkins. He definitely put on a perfect, a good, a good performance. Now I'm curious to know if Jamie Pickett, after he tapped and he heard the... And if he heard the... The fucking the air horn. I, I wonder if he was like, ah, oh, fuck. Because, dude, he was literally one second off. Yeah. One fucking I mean, second off. I mean, like you were saying, Kyle Dawkins pretty much took over this fight. Very patient with Pickett. You know, if Pickett would land something, he didn't. He didn't lose a step. Uh, and, I mean, Kyle Dawkins had a pretty weird road in the last couple years. I think his last one was in 2020, and since then he's had, like, you know, two canceled fights, one no contest with Kevin Holland, um, and then a loss. So it's just been kind of a weird, bumpy road for him. But we all know, like, he's talented. We all know he's, you know, he's good. He's he's physical. And then when he had him in that submission, um, because he had him on the ground, and you're like, okay, you know, once he's on the ground, he's going to take over what you did. And I think he tried to get him in a guillotine, I want to say, earlier. But uh, yeah. Pickett actually had his chin right under, so he got out. Um, but when he had that dar choke, it was like 10, 15 seconds. Left, so it was one of those where it's like, okay, you know, it, it, I don't think he'll put a lot of pressure because, you know, why exert so much energy if the round's going to end anyways? Um, but then you see, like, he crossed his legs, and he had it locked, and then you're like, okay, wait. And you see, you see uh, Pickett's hand, like, flare up with, like, two seconds. You're like, no way. And then, boom, he taps the buzzer horns. It was weird, though, because right away when I seen that, I was like, no, he tapped. Like, he for sure tapped. You could, It, it was, like, evident, yet simultaneous instant at the same time. Yeah. It was just weird. Like, you see a sand. You clearly see a sand, and then you hear the buzzer. So it was so fast, but you knew. You knew he won. But it was kind of one of those things, like, he, he won this, right? Like, yeah. he, he clearly tapped. Pickett gets up, you know, has his hand up. And he's like, okay, you know, like, you got me. And in my head, I'm just like, how? Like, how do you let this happen? I read something, I think, yesterday or today that apparently he tapped because he felt like he was going to bite his tongue off. Like, his tongue, oh, like... Oh, yes, I he heard He literally that felt like he bite... And I could only imagine, like, what kind of fucking pain that's in. Not only that, somebody crushing your neck. So, I mean, I'm not going to knock the guy because, fuck, for me to even last five seconds through that is probably hell. But, I mean, you know, this is a seasoned professional fighter. You're kind of thinking, what? But now that, you know, I wouldn't see why that, how that's an excuse that he was going to buy us. Because he wasn't arguing, you know. He tapped. He clearly tapped. Yeah. Everybody was shocked. It was crazy. Doc has said he knew. He was like, yeah, I saw him. T- I-, I felt him tap. So I knew. But I just wanted to ask Herb. And Herb was like, no, it's over. And then it's just like, damn. Like, it, one, it's just one of those things, man. It happens so fast. Yeah, it's like the the saying that they say, you know, live to see another fight. I guess you know what I mean. So, yeah, so, he, sometimes you just got you just know when you have to, you know, tap out and you know when realistically. But you just like you felt the dynamic of the fight. Dawkins was gonna win this anyways. Yeah, very early it's on. MMA, anything could happen, but at the pace it was going, Pickett had nothing for him. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Doc has got a fucking buzzer beater submission. Never yeah. happens really in the sport. Rare as fuck. Um, and he gets a performance at night, so well deserved. Yep. Back in the win column in 2022. Yep. Shout out to Kyle Dawkins. Now I'll leave it up to his brother, Chris Dawkins, to uh, bounce deep, back. Yeah, bounce back versus Curtis Blades in Columbus, Ohio. So, well, I think that's in probably next month. So keep an eye out for that one. 
And that's that's <sighs> interesting because uh, you know, Fight Night's finally uh, going outside of uh, the Apex. Thank God. Probably now. Hopefully, we can get one in fucking Lamore now. I wouldn't see if why we not. We get one in Fresno. That'd be pretty cool too. Yeah, I feel like if I feel like if the UFC comes to the Valley, they're gonna def- they have to for sure hit up Lamore first. And I hope to see that one by the end of this year, if not by before the summer. But I, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, Those will definitely be must. Yeah, must for, for damn sure. All right. So uh, to finish off this card, we had Johnny Walker versus Jamal Hill. And oh, man. Oh, man. Johnny Walker, he's definitely a character. Came out feeling himself, doing a bunch of crazy moves and shit. It's working on the cut, man. Yeah, he was fucking giving the cut man a fucking lap dance. And, you know, uh, no pun intended, but the guy was actually an exotic dancer back in his day. A male exotic dancer. Um, I mean, shit, I don't want to be stereotypical, but definitely um, explains the haircut and, I guess, the way he looks and the moves he his was vibe. having. Yeah, so, uh, you know, 2020... 2022 actually you know let him let him do him um and then jamal hill he just looked focused he looked ready for war he looked like he wanted this win um and that's exactly what had happened uh before this fight or before um jamal hill got his fucking arm snapped um he was actually undefeated so if it wasn't before um for him getting his his uh his arm dislocated versus paul craig he would have still probably been um undefeated uh, just depending on that, on the way that that fight would have went, but I guess that's something that I overlooked. And I remember whenever he fought Jimmy Crew, I automatically thought that uh, Jamal Hill was gonna, he was like already um broken mentally. You know what I mean? Because if that if I were to get my arm dislocated, I'd be fucking terrified to fight again. But this wasn't the case with him. So he beat Jimmy Crew uh with the right hook, and then he he also beat Johnny Walker with an overhand right. So. He definitely has a lot of fucking power in that right hand of his. And it was just just the way that um, Johnny Walker, like, kind of sprung back was kind of surprising to me. He must have got hit so fucking hard in the temple. And just and with, it didn't even land flush. And even land flush. It kind of hit him, like, it hit him on the temple kind of awkwardly. And then yeah. I, I think just with that, with the power combined with hitting him in the temple, also combined with just uh, Johnny Walker also realizing that he needed to back up from that punch. It kind of like fucked up his equilibrium and he over extended too much. And at that point, I think he was already knocked out and yeah, it ultimately made him drop stiff. back. It was go stiff like that. Cause, cause as soon as he went stiff like that and he want, and he fell back to the cage and he fell out awkwardly, I'm actually going to try to find that picture. Um, as soon as he fell back, he was knocked out. And then I think Jamal Hill landed like two more punches and, and he, uh, he definitely was, um, knocked out for fucking sure. So he, uh, Jamal Hill put on a great uh, performance. I also think it was pretty cool because Jamal Hill, uh, not only did he show up in fashion, but he also brought his son out there and he also had his son suited and booted as well. And he actually had his son up on the podium whenever he was doing his post fight interviews. And they actually asked his son some questions. Uh, it's very clear, you know, his son is a little camera shy, which is fine. I mean, I'd be fucking camera shy if I was his age as well. But um, ultimately, his son said that he was proud of his dad and he enjoyed the performance. Uh, and Jamal Hill, you know, I guess this is top from here. He definitely deserves um, some top ranked opponents now. So I'm actually pretty excited to see uh, where his um, where he gets led. Um, Fun fact, Jamal Hill has six kids. <laughs> and his son's not even his oldest kid. He has a 15-year-old <laughs> daughter. And he's only 30 years old. So he has... He had a kid when he was 15, and he just had him mature at such a young age. It's pretty crazy. And he said this at the Hilwani show, so, um, you know, this is public information. So, uh, I mean, it's crazy. Five kids at the age of 30, and not only or six kids at the age of 30, and not only that, to have one at the age of 15. Um, that's insane, man, for him to just be able to juggle all that. Yeah. And he was saying, you know, he's doing pretty well uh, and stable, but. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've been a fan of this guy for, for a little bit. Um, not too long, but since I heard him for a little bit. And then he got his uh, arm broken, you know, pretty snap with that arm bar uh, uh, back in June, June or July. It was, um, uh, March. Fies, it was March or he April. Get, he, gets it, he gets it scheduled uh, with Jimmy Crute. And automatically, Jimmy Crute's a submission guy. So you're like, okay, you know, it's exactly the guy he doesn't want to fight. But I was excited. I was like, you know what? This is time for him to come out and show like you know he he, he has what it takes he learned from it um, I wasn't June. and he, he just looked like a fighter that was going to be you know focused and yeah. and fun and then um 
Holy shit out of your fucking mic. Dude, for him to come out, 48-second knockout against Crew, it was just insane. I was happy for the guy. And in this fight, man, when I seen it happen, I was jumping. I was like, wow, that's fucking insane. Um, but yeah, Jamal Hill, dude, sweet dreams, calling out, um, who is it? Volkov? Is he calling out Volkov? I, I don't know. Who I want to say Volkov, Volkov, but, you know, Ozenmir. He's calling out Volkan Ozenmir, I think. Uh, so they've been exchanging some shit back in Twitter. But shout out to Jamal Hill defending Johnny Walker. Um, a lot of people made memes out of that that knockout. You know, the way his positioning was, it was kind of awkward and weird. Um, but shout out to Jamal Hill for defending him. You know, he doesn't like any cyber bullies. So he's pretty much calling any, uh, you know, Twitter happy, Twitter finger person, um, calling him out. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, man, Light Heavy is looking pretty interesting. Um and we'll see where it goes from here. Yeah. I actually want to pull up that that um that picture, but Ed, your your mic uh kind of took a shit. It's a little over um I don't I don't know if your microphone died or something, but um let's see, where the fuck is this picture? Uh <laughs> I could definitely see why they make memes of it, which is fucked up. So like but yeah, that's it's basically how he looked as soon as he fell. Um, yeah, so he hit him with this overhand right. It didn't land uh, necessarily clean. And then he sprung back like that. And then he um, he had fell back. So here's a better picture of it. So as soon as this happened, then this happened. He sprung back a little bit. And then he fell and he ate shit. And then um, Jamal Hill went and he tried to capitalize. So, regardless, dude, I mean, I, any fighter that steps into the octagon, I, I give my respect to. I mean, it takes a lot of balls to, uh, you know, do weight cuts, fight in front of millions, and, you know, actually fight fucking naked because um, I don't look that great with my shirt off. So, so shout out to all of them. Uh, Chris Gonzo, how do you know he was an exotic dancer? That's sus, bro. Chris, you're sus. sus. Yeah, Chris, you're sus. Is it? It's a former employer, bro. Yeah. I don't know where I heard it, but I did hear it. I did hear that that he was a, a former um exotic male dancer. So, I mean, fuck, dude. You got to do what you got to do to make that money. Um, yeah, you can. Yeah. All right, Ed. Let, let the people know about uh where our picks are and all that stuff is now. Yeah, so um, wrapping up, UFC Vegas 48. ESPN 20, Fight Night 201, wherever the fuck we are. Gonzo is sitting at 76 and 48 all time with the 5 and 0 perfect record in the last event. I'm at 73 and 51, going 4 and 1 in the last event. Bet picks, Gonzo's 3 and 4 and 4 and 3. None of this has changed. Bank total still. Gonzo taking $65 from me, I'm taking 85 from him. So those have been the same. We haven't bet in a while. Surprised we didn't bet on the Figgy fight. Yeah. Um, our last bet was the Oliveira Poirier. Um, but we might have some coming up. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's where we stand all time. All right. Time to hit up some rankings, see what we got. Yep. Um, let's see. I guess as far the only rankings that I really want to cover on this one is just the Johnny Walker and uh and Jamal Hill. Uh let me... so these guys are in the light heavyweight division. Um, Jamal Hill was boosted up to rank 10. And Johnny Walker was put down to rank number two. Um, yeah, there uh, was talks where, um, potentially Ozan, I mean, uh, Walker could fight either Ozanmir, Reyes, or jump up all the way to Anthony Smith. Um, but he already exchanged some Twitter, some Twitter words with Ozanmir, and then even said in one of his tweets, contracts on your way. So, I think we might have that next. It's already been self-explained. Remember, Tiago Santos came off a win from Johnny Walker, too. Um, but I think, did he lose to Anthony Smith? Uh, yes. Smith yes. Uh, uh, Anthony Smith beat, beat Tiago Santos. Yeah, so that was his. So Anthony Smith is up there, too, in the 205 combo, I guess. Uh, maybe he has to take out Rockets, but Rockets is coming off a loss, too, I believe, to uh, Saro Gan. I mean, not Strogon, sorry. I'm thinking heavyweights. Yeah, so I think he has Rockets to worry about. Um, so who knows? Loser out of, um, 
you know, maybe Glover <laughs> and, and Yuri. Or maybe Anthony Smith fights uh, Jan Blahovic. Um, I could definitely see that happening. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Glover is reigning him right now. Jan's obviously a great com- a contender. He was the champion, defended it, I think, already once or twice. Um, B. Izzy, and then we have Yuri Priyaka with the most insane power we see in that division right now. So he's probably the scariest fighter who I think we both think is going to come out the champion by the end of the year. So pretty interesting. See what happens. But Jamal Hill is definitely on his way up. Yeah, like I said, uh, or how Ed was saying, uh, if Jamal Hill wants uh, Vulcan Ozdemir, I, I don't see a reason why not to. He definitely deserves that fight just to get him a little bit uh, up in the rankings. I don't know too much about Vulcan Ozdemir, so I'm going to have to do my research on him. Uh, Johnny Walker on the other side. Pff, I don't know what you do with him. Paul Craig, maybe? Yeah. Ryan Spann, Jimmy Crew. Jimmy Crew, I think, would be a good one because Crew's just coming off a loss, too. Ryan Spann, I don't think that's a bad fight either. Maybe Paul Craig, because Paul Craig just came off a wolf from Jamon Hill. Um, unless, you know, I, I don't know. We could go anywhere with these. Light heavyweights are uh, interesting. Not, like, super activity, but interesting activity, you know. To, uh, I guess that, that's all we can say about it. Yeah. I'm trying to see what other fighters they have. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, I it's definitely you go a toss below up. the top ten. It gets kind of uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> same same idea here. Oh no, but we have um, darn, he made want... his debut. Yeah, I was gonna say I was like I think we have someone coming up, but yeah, let me go pull it up real quick. He made his debut debut in the prelims. Undefeated Brazilian fighter. Uh, it what was it? UFC. Oh, Adesanya Whitaker, right? No. Was it? No, it was Hermanson Strickland. Sorry. So Hermanson Strickland. Let me go get his name really quick. Uh, man, this the UFC website is dog shit. Garbage, man. You said it was a uh, <clears throat> Sean Strickland part. Yeah. Uh, Gosh dang this this website is freaking bogus. Is it John Keston yet? Keston Keston Yetta? No. Wait, I'd have to see a Facebook. That doesn't sound like. Him. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. I guess Ed could do the research on that. It was, um... Oh, Jalton Almeida. There you go. He had a first-round knockout against Danilo Marquise. So, um... You know, maybe he'll get a crack at the top 10 after that stellar debut. The reason I say that is because light heavyweights isn't really too interesting in the bottom half. So I think he could easily get a top 15 fight. Um just based on the hype and based on his debut. So, um, yeah. I yeah, would we'll just have to wait and see. Um, shit, Ed, is there anything else that you got? I don't know who else you wanted to. Oh, that's it. I, 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 I can't, I can't go. Well, I, I only like matchmaking for the fights that just happened. As far as matchmaking for everybody else, it's kind of pick and choosing, like just depending. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there was any significant fights in terms of, uh, yeah, none of them are ranked, I believe. Let me see. I mean, Kyle Dawkins might get a top 15 fight. Maybe. Might. Yeah, maybe. It's possible. What What um, weight are they? Well, it looks like they fought at a catch weight. Middle. I think right. middle. Oh, I think Dawkins is uh, primarily a middleweight, though. Fucking make him fight walking Buckley. <laughs> nah, I think that's yeah, too soon I mean, for uh, Buckley. Oh. Yeah, we'll, we'll see where Buckley and them land. And then, obviously, Jim Miller. Kevin um, Holland. Make it run it back with Kevin Holland. Fuck it. Uh, Holland's at Walter, though. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's going down to Walter. So I think I think they're they're going to go off separate paths now. Chris Weidman? Nah, but he's, he's still out from injury. Um, back in July, though. I think that's what he said. I mean, it, it, the, it aligns right, but fuck, dude. I, I don't know. Those kinds of breaks are kind of scary to me. I wouldn't want to... It is, but I mean, Silva came back and did it. 
But to be uh, but to be fair, it wasn't the same silver that we saw, so. No, but you know, it could have maybe had to do something with age too. But the fact that he was able to come back, have a lot of fights, you know, is still encouraging. And you know, next fight, Chris Weidman fights. Uh, I'm gonna be tuned in. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Other than that, I I think I'm good. Ed, is there anything else that you want to talk about? Oh, we could wrap it up, my boy. Alrighty. How Ed said, we're going to wrap this bitch up, so... Shout out to Vato Chris 69 Yeah, shout, shout out. out. Nelly to, uh, to Rard. I don't you know fucking bot-ass bitch. Uh, shout out Subu Sawu. Yeah, that's my boy Everybody right there. Everybody else who tuned in, appreciate y'all. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Vato Chris uh, has, uh, was given, gifted a sweater for being number one fan, but um, he, he is beefing currently with uh, Eric. Eric so, is nowhere to be seen. He likes to work in, in silence. So. In silence. So uh, UFC 272, we will see them come out. Uh, we will be at B-dubs. Other than that, that's it for me. Gonzo, what you got, my boy? Uh, for UFC 272, I might start some controversy. <laughs> I was telling Ed about some shit that I wanted to get, and I actually did get it. So it should be fun. And uh, if I'm going to do it and pull and wear this... Crazy shit. Um, the belt is coming out to B-dubs, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we shall see if, I, if I'm going to wear this uh, piece of uh, equipment, I guess you can say. But I'll wear it for you guys for sure on the preview show. But until then, we have UFC Vegas 49, Makachev versus Bobby Green. Oh, and th- that's going to be a great fucking fight. So until then, guys, follow us on all the social media platforms. TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Give us a like, follow, do all that great stuff. Um, Twitter. I already said Twitter, huh? Uh, fucking Twitch, YouTube, all that great stuff. Uh, I think we're at 82 subs on YouTube. So, yeah, people really fucking with us. Um, so, yeah, guys. We will see you guys this Friday for the preview show of UFC Vegas. 49, I believe it's 49. Makacha versus Green. Until then, everybody, be safe. We'll see you on the next one. Deuces.